Hello there, guys. My name is Jacob, and welcome to my channel, which is called On the Spur of the Moment Apologetics. And in this channel, I, on the spur of the moment, speak of different ideas, beliefs, and theories concerning God's existence, both on the atheist perspective as well as in the Christian's perspective. But I am not going to hide anything. I am a Christian, and I do believe that there is a God, okay? and that that God best fits the idea of the Christian God, which is based on the Hebrew Bible, which is known as Torah, or the first four books in the Old Testament. Okay, So in this, on this channel, I provide different arguments using the signs that we know of today for the existence of God. And before I start, I'd like to first um, introduce myself. I am a lecturer. That means I'm a teacher. Um, I graduated a couple of years ago with my master's degree in business. Uh, before that, I had a bachelor's in political science with a minor in philosophy as well as in business. And during that time, I had dug, dug, del I delved deep into my faith. It wasn't after I graduated high school that I really decided to go in and look at all the evidence for my faith. At that point, when I was about 18 years old, I said, God, you know what? If you exist, all right, then I'm going to look at all the evidence to see if science has came up with a better reason for why the universe came into existence. And thus far, after many conversations with many professors and many of my colleagues, there has yet to be a solid, good argument against God, God's existence, against the reason for why we're here in the first place and why everything is as we see it today. Okay. So let's move on. And without further ado, let me talk about the first thing that we should talk about, which I believe is, it, it all has to do with what we can observe about reality. What can we see about the universe that allows us to deduct or deduce the existence of a God? Well, what I see, and I don't know if you see it, but I see that the scientists have observed that our universe is expanding. It's expanding at a much faster rate which that, they, that was previously theorized. We see that the universe, the heat in the universe, all the heat in the universe is, is converting into cold. It's, it's dying out in a sense, to put it in a, in a broad sense, that the universe the, full of heat, right, is transitioning to a, a cold state of matter. It's, it's converting to a cold state of matter. And that tells me that heat cannot exist forever. And if the universe had always existed, then the heat in this universe would have already died out. A famous theory known as the heat death tells us, and it's based on the laws of thermodynamics, which tell us that heat is a consumable. Heat goes away after a period of time. Even the sun. If you, if you believe that the sun will one day die out and turn into cold dust, then you believe that in the heat, heat death theory, which basically says the same thing, that all the heat in the universe is finite. That means it, it didn't always exist. It doesn't always exist. And it will not always exist. And if that's the case, then that means that the universe hasn't always existed. And in fact, the universe actually has an age. And so the age of the universe, I'm going to Google it really quickly because I do my research. The age of the universe is, I think, I believe it's 40, or no, it's 59 million years. No, 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 I'm sorry. It says uh, 13.72 77, 2 billion years old. Okay, so the reason why I'm pointing this out is because the fact, the mere fact that the universe has an age tells us that it, it hasn't always existed. And in fact, the most, some of the most credible scientists have said that uh, physical space time as we know it came into existence. That all the physics, the physical laws of nature, uh, at one time, they didn't exist. 
That means that our perception of space-time, which is dependent on matter existing, if matter didn't exist, then our perception of space-time wouldn't exist according to scientists. So if, if at one time matter and the, the way we see matter in reality working didn't, did not exist. So that's what they mean when they say that the, the laws of physics break down, that they no longer are applicable at the point of before the Big Bang. In fact, many would say there was no before the Big Bang because physics didn't exist. There was no physical laws. Now, what does that tell us? If there was no physics before the Big Bang, does that tell us that something that was physical caused the Big Bang? If there was no physics, then physics couldn't have caused physics, meaning nature couldn't have caused nature into existence, which is dependent on the laws of physics. No, in fact, something needed to, needed to transcend nature to have caused nature into existence, to have caused the physical laws into existence. So, based on that, we can kind of deduct what was needed for space-time dependent on matter to exist. And this existence needed to be space timeless. This means that it needed to not be dependent on matter. Now, people say, well, Jacob, or whoever's making this argument, they'll say, how did God exist when there was no time? There was no time. Well, there's two theories of time. One theory says that time is dependent on matter. That and this is the most popular theory of time. And it's the most applicable theory of time based on our limited perception of the physics and our reality. So given that physics now exists, this is the time that scientists claim we can see. And this type of time says we depend, or time itself depends on the material reality that we observe that without matter, time wouldn't exist. Now, if you believe that um, time can exist without matters ex existing. If you think time can exist without the matter that we observe existing, then you believe in what's known as absolute time. Okay, and absolute time is more of a. It, it's it's not really testable because all we know is that physics exists. Physical things exist, so we can't test what that which brought physical things into being. So I believe in both. I believe both in physical time and space timeless time, time not dependent on matter, okay? So just for a second, close your eyes and think, okay, does, does time pass if matter didn't exist? And that sensation of time that we feel in our heads, our ability to imagine time existing without matter, that's the type of time that a lot of us actually use. For example, an hour for me would equal an hour for you on the other side of the world. But according to the, the theory of relative time, that is just, I guess they'll say that that's not very applicable. It's, that's not what we could observe uh, scientifically. Okay. But anyways, moving on. So we're talking about time dependent on matter. Okay. That came into existence at the point of the Big Bang. But before that, that sense of that theory of time did not exist. The, phys the laws of physics didn't exist. You can Google it, YouTube it, whatever you want, and there's many scientists who will tell you that these things did not exist, right? So that tells me, based on that alone, if there wasn't an eternal prime moving, prime mover, um, entity that always existed outside of space time, uh, physical space time, if there wasn't something to have caused physical space time, then physical space time would have never came into existence. Think of an, and it just close your eyes for a second again. I just want you, I want you to imagine this really quickly. Imagine an eternity of non-existence, of no physical space time existing, no matter, no nothing. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, okay, boom, we have physical space-time coming into existence. Now, 
that tells me that there had to be something that transcends physical space-time, something not dependent on it for its existence to have caused physical space-time into existence. It would be illogical to say that physical space-time caused physical space-time into existence. It would be illogical. And that's why, again, the universe has an H, which was 13.78, about um, 13.78 billion years old, just rounding roughly. So that's one of the main arguments. And again, there's been many counter arguments against this idea, the idea that the universe is systolic, that the universe can rebound and bounce back and cause maybe another Big Bang or cause another universe into existence, which there simply is no evidence for. In fact, there's evidence against those theories. For example, the universe expanding at a much faster rate than previously expected proves that the universe isn't slowing down. The expansion rate is not, it's not going to slow down anytime soon. It's, in, in fact, it's increasing in its expansion rate. And so it disproves any idea of the, of the universe contracting back and bouncing back. It's, it, there's no signs of it ever, gonna, ever going to contract back. In, in fact, there's theories that say that the universe might split apart, that it's moving so, spreading so, so fast apart that it'll end up spreading apart. Okay? So there's no proof for any big bounce or any uh, systolic universe since the universe is, in fact, dying out and it's expanding at a much faster rate. When I say it's dying out, what I'm saying is that the heat in our universe is burning out, okay? Much like a, a, a lit match would burn out. Everything in our universe is burning out, converting, changing, the energy changing into a state where heat doesn't exist, okay? And again, that's just one theory to refute against those who want to bring that up. All right. And I like to call those the BS theories, the BS theories, theories made up for the sole purpose of countering what science actually shows us, what science actually tells us. Okay. Now, there was a video I was watching. This is off topic. I was watching a video with the cosmic skeptic um, whose name I really don't care much about. And the reason why, the reason why I'm saying that is because I don't remember his name. I think it was like Alex or something. Um, he was on a vid he was on a YouTube video talking about Pascal's wager. And if you don't know what Pascal's wager is, uh, I'm going to give you a very basic form of it. It basically says if there is a God, then the Christian gain an infinite um, good. They gain it. They gain something that's infinitely good because it lasts forever, and you know they get heaven basically. And if God exists, then atheists lose out. They lose everything. They get, they get the infinitely bad, or you could say zero, depending on what you believe happens after death. But anyways, besides the point, or if there isn't a God, the outcomes would be that the Christian gains nothing and that the atheist gains nothing. And so the most logical reason, the most logical thing to do would to pick or, to, or it would be to live as if there was a God so that you could gain that infinitely good if there was a God. Now, Alex, in that video, the cosmic skeptic, had said that if, even if, let's say, okay, there wasn't a God, that the atheist would gain more. Even though it, it's finite, meaning limited of what the atheist, I mean, not limited, but it's just something that doesn't last. He says that the atheists gain more because what if you wanted to live or alive or do something that was contrary to the beliefs in your God, and so you didn't get to do those things, and so you, you mess out? Well, you know, the fact is that this universe, everything in this universe is dying out. You, your mentality, you know, you, everything that you are will die. And when... Let's say, um, let's, call, let's, let's use this, this, this example. There was a Christian who this person missed out on things that he probably wanted to do. And this atheist lived his life to the fullest, went out and 
got drunk or whatever they, whatever they think it, it means to live your life to the fullest. When they both die, they gain nothing. You take nothing with you. You don't take memories. Your sense of self-worth, your sense of gain in this world, you don't take it with you. You don't take any of that with you. You're, when you're dead, you're dead. Any sense of self-accomplishment is gone with you, okay? And if you think, well, you know, in this world, uh, at least I make an impact that will last. The idea of it lasting is very finite. We don't know how long us as humans would live, but at the same time, that's an emotional pill because when you're dead, none of that really matters to you anymore. Okay, you're in the same state as everyone else, which is in a dead state, state of death. And everything, everybody, this whole universe, like I said in the previous video, in, in a way, philosophically is dying out. That's just the most simplest way to put it. Okay, the heat, everything's being exhausted, exhausted in this universe. Changing forms and matter, changing. Now, um, given that, I believe the Christian and atheist still gain nothing. The atheist sense of what he gains in this little reality is nothing. And that doesn't mean that the, the Christian misses, really misses out on anything. I mean, he, get, he still got to enjoy the best of life, which I believe has to do with things like eating food, listening to music, going out, doing this and that with family, raising a family and stuff like that. Okay. But that's, again, that's just a subjective sense. And it, it's really worth nothing once we're all dead. And our, and our perception of time, our perception of this time on this world, according to many uh, scientists, even Dawkins, Richard Dawkins, is illusory. Our sense of value of this time in this world is, is illusory. It's based on chemical processes in our heads, which I believe is very finite. Our, per our ability to perceive reality is very finite, very limited, and we should not base everything on it. On, on what we can actually see physically. I mean, sure, you, I would base it on logic, reasoning, and all that, but again, two different worldviews. Atheists believe, if, if, if the atheists are right and that there is no God, then this brain, is, it, it really is just chemical reactions. Our body's made up of bacteria, water, and different things that really don't surmount to anything, okay? So it's really a pointless existence. So, again, so just going back to the Pascal Wager argument, I, I still make the argument that both the atheists and Christian lose, they gain nothing after they die. They don't, they don't gain anything. This finite sense of worth or uh, gain is very finite, gone, disappears with, with you, and any sense of accomplishment will die out, especially when, the humani when humanity dies out, right, especially when that happens. So, moving on with this argument. A uh, common ar argument against Pascal's wager by atheists is that it could be, re be referring to any god. I mean, they, they say, well, there's there are all these thousands of gods and whatnot. Well, I'm glad at least that the cosmic skeptic, Alex, um, accepts the fact that there are gods more logical than other gods. Okay? That the god that I talked about that is um, de deducted that we can deduce from what we can observe, observe about being, be, reality be, being finite in its existence is more logical than um, a god created by a Hindu out of wood who, is, who he makes and says, hey, this, this god represents this lake over here that I, that I see. I mean, that, there's, there's gods that are more logical, and he, I'm glad Alex can at least admit that, okay? So the God that we deduct from reality, the one that we say, okay, so we see that the universe of physical space-time came into existence, and thus a non-physical entity, one that's not dependent on space-time, must have, a, have always existed. And then intentionally, he, should have, he, he intentionally, this, 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 this um, space-timeless entity intentionally created space-time. Why do I say intentionally? Well, if there was no intention behind our creation, then our creation, the, the creation of physical space-time would have never came into existence. It would have never been. It would have never happened. Why? Well, think about it for a second. If there is no physical space-time, then for an eternity, there should have been no physical space-time. 
unless something intentionally decided or caused space, physical space-time into existence after an eternity of no material space-time, okay? And so that's why we call this entity the unmoved mover, meaning that nothing had caused it. It was always there. Okay. So going back to Pascal's wager, given that there are only a few religions today that are practiced, and let's say that this God, you know, if he really existed, his belief system would be around today. Okay. But given the subjective, the subjectivity of the human mind, um, there are different belief systems today that are practiced. Now, remember, Pascal's wager is all about what is gained out of believing in God. Okay. Now, if you're a Christian and you live like Jesus Christ did and you follow Jesus Christ, okay, according to, the, to many Hinduists, according to Buddhists, according to different religions, if you were as good as Jesus Christ, or if you, even, if you were even close, and you walked and you did what Jesus Christ would do, then you would have earned he uh, entrance into those different religions' heavens. You would have earned entrance into those different heavens of different religions. Okay, so that, that increases the Christian's likelihood of going into heaven surmountably, greatly, greatly, all right? It, it increases the Christian's chance to go to different heavens, even if it's a different heaven, uh, greatly. And look, Hinduists, many of them say, if you believe, because you know they have many gods or whatever, right? If you believe in any god and you live according to the moral doctrine of that god, then you are permitted entrance into heaven. Okay? Now, that's a major religion right there. That's a huge, you know, there's a lot of people that believe that. If you even believed in, let's say, um, the God of the Buddhists, okay? And some Buddhists don't believe in God. Some Buddhists do. They believe in a transcendent reality. Well, anyways, if you lived according to the way Jesus lived in the Bible, then you would en earn entrance into, into that reality of transcendent um, goodness, I guess is how I would say it, where Buddhist is, or where, where Buddha, I mean, is, where he exists. So, and when it comes to atheism, everything's based on your subjective sense of, of morality. There is no guidance. There is nothing, uh, no, no objective, objectivity behind that. Um, so atheists have a, a, a far less, uh, lesser chance of getting, getting into heaven of these other religions. All right. So it, it would still be logical to believe in the Christian God, which is the God of the Hebrews. Yahweh, and who sent his son, Jesus Christ, to fulfill the, the prophecies in the Old Testament, okay? So, the point is, given the faith of Christianity, you still have a far higher likelihood of earning entrance in heaven to gain something that's infin infinitely good in other religions. While in atheism, I think the, the chances are far less, because you don't really... You don't really have, you don't subside by any God's uh, objective sense of morality, okay? So, that's enough of that. Now, there's, there, there's, there's several, certainly several arguments for the existence of God and why it's more logical to believe in God than to not believe in God. Um, I feel like the main one has to do with how finite everything is, how everything seems to have just came into existence and that it didn't always exist, given the laws of thermodynamics and the heat in this universe. But one thing that atheists love to throw out, through, throw at that argument is this idea that concerns one of the laws of thermodynamics. And it's funny because they, they quote it, and they, they only quote like maybe a, a sentence of the main um, law which is that um, energy, or that, not energy, I mean, sorry, matter is neither created or destroyed. But the fact is that it's talking about the universe as a system. It doesn't say whether that system was created or not, but
but it, it's referring to that law is, is referring to this, a system, a closed system, which we know our universe originally wasn't closed. Okay. Otherwise it wouldn't have came into existence, but it's talking about, as we see reality today, our, at least our portion of this universe where we live and the laws that it abides by, we can see that if I were to burn up a piece of matter, that it would that matter would still exist, but it would exist in a different state. Okay, that matter still exists, but it, it exists in a different state. And I bet, I bet there's going to be one atheist, someone who's going to bring up this argument before I bring it up right now. But I'm going to dismiss that right now, it, just to make a mockery of it. Okay, so if you look deeply into that law, it tells us that. Matter, if, when it, when, once it burns out, right, let's say when, once the sun dies out, the heat goes away of that huge hydrogen gas ball, it goes away. The matter that it, 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 that, that it, that, that, you know, that it's made out of, of that it's made up of, um, st will still exist in a different state, which would be a dead, cold state. Now it's funny because I give I, I tend to give inanimate objects uh, physical characteristics like it dying, you know, dying. But I think we all understand what I mean is when I say the earth when the sun dies is that the heat goes away, you know, it converts into another state of matter that 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 can no longer be considered heat. Once you burn a match, guys, and it, and that match turns into ashes, you cannot relight the ashes. The ashes won't relight because heat goes away. It's not something that can always exist, and it hasn't always existed, okay? That's why we know that our universe is finite. It hasn't always existed. So, the law, that law is, is talking about a closed system, and many scientists agree that before our space-time, our system came into existence, it wasn't a closed system. That's why they say... From uh, that's why many uh, atheists like to say, well, what if our universe came from a different universe? What if our universe is a product of a different universe? Okay, which that universe itself, will you would have to argue for the logic and the physics that would control that universe. And if you can say that that universe is physics and laws and whatever um, uh, transcended physical space time that it wasn't dependent on physics the laws of physics then you're you're starting to go go into a realm where there just logic doesn't exist anymore because you can't really base anything on what we observe anymore okay because everything's based everything we come to know is based on physical laws and so i believe to to end this video i want to just say i believe atheists need to come to a point where they just humble themselves okay and finally realize that this brain right here, if there was no God, is just a product of chemical reactions, a product of blind processes, things that didn't have intentionality if, if there was no God. Um, you know, like if you, if you want to say a, a vial of chemical fluid, brain fluid has intentionality, I don't know, that's something that you're going to have to just kind of figure out because you really cannot say that everything we observe should be based on what we can actually physically see and test and repeatedly test and test and see it happen over and over again. That's just irrational. Okay. Um, so yes, we just need to humble ourselves and understand that this brain fluid here that we call a brain with, with, with uh, you know, those electric currents and whatever that the brain helps to produce all that is very limited in its ability to perceive things, especially if we're just like every other animal. There's animals that we, can, that, we, that we see that cannot perceive what we see. They cannot perceive our logic, our reasoning. Otherwise, they would be like us, all right? Otherwise, they would be able to talk like us. We can see in nature the order of logic, the logic and uh, mental processes of different animals and at the lower level of uh, you know each animal's ability to be intellectual in any sense of the word 
we see that these animals do not have the mental capacity to even observe things that we can observe, to be able to understand things that we can understand. And so, just like them, I believe we are very limited in our ability to perceive something greater, to be able to see what is greater. But we can, based on what we observe, make a, a pretty good deduction of what has to be out there in order for us to be in existence to begin with. Now, another thing that I didn't really talk about in this video has to do with the fine tuning of space time. That everything seems to have a, a logical rhyme and reason to it. It's funny because I've heard atheists say, well, you know, if there was a God, then why is there so much chaos in the universe? Why does everything out there look so chaotic? Uh, everything's just random. Well, it really, it, it really isn't. Everything has its rhyme and reason. Everything has mechanics behind it. A mechanics behind it. And why does it have this mechanics behind it? Well, we have to go back to the original cause of all things, the first cause, and look at that first cause and see how that first cause was the source of all the logic, all the reasoning that we can observe in our reality, all the math and all the science that we can observe in our reality. All the theories, theorems, equations, everything we see was the product of this first cause. And again, it, this first cause needed to be intentional. Otherwise, physical space-time would have never came into existence to begin with. For an eternity, it would have remained as if there was nothing. Okay? And, and when I use the word nothing, I'm talking about um, no physical space-time, which is funny because I'm trying to argue that there could be possibly, or based on the deductions we can observe about our reality, that there is more than likely something that can transcend our sense, our physical sense of mat material space-time, our, our, our sense of matter, um, something that can exist beyond matter, something that doesn't depend on matter to exist, something like absolute time that doesn't depend on matter um, to exist, okay? Um, so, given that everything I've just said, I want to go ahead and just um, end this video here. I will try to get deeper into some of the arguments I made here to counter um, typical um, ignorant-based arguments based uh, made against the arguments I present here. And the, a, lot of, a lot of it is emotional. If you really read the arguments made against the arguments here, a lot of it is really emotional based on ignorance, a denial of the facts that we can actually observe in our reality. Um, so just pay close attention to that, that fact. And you guys, take care. I'll see you next time. I'm signing out.